Hi, this is AP Calc Review. We're going to do average rate of change versus average value. These are two concepts that confuse students. Sometimes they can mean the same thing, but it all depends upon your perspective that you're looking at it from. So I'm going to start off with kind of the intuitive ideas of what each one is. And then we're going to go ahead to uh, some very basic applications, but hopefully we get the concepts with that. Okay, what happens now is that if we start off with average rate of change, average rate of change is just going to be the slope of the secant. So this is the Ecolab. Ecolab is a stock. And if I want to do average rate of change, average rate of change, and I hope I can get this line pretty straight, not quite straight enough. But if I take the slope of this, this is a secant line. And the slope of the secant line is going to be your average rate of change. And so if I look at this, I have some many ups and downs throughout the course of this thing. Uh, what happens though is that we take the slope of this and they will tell me what, what's your average change per year. So if I say that, and I'm going to approximate these, uh, five years ago, this point at time zero was at 45. I think I got that right there. Yep. And then this point here after five years was 85. I want to find the slope of this secant line. And so to do this, average rate of change is just that slope. So if I just take your stock price and the difference of that over your time, everything's disappearing on me here. All I'm going to end up with is 85 minus 45 all over 5 minus 0. And so this is 40 over 5, which would be 8. Okay? And what does that 8 mean? Well, you got to put units on it. And this one's going to be funny because we do dollars, and so I'm going to write it out, though. Dollars per year. And since it's positive, that means I'm increasing. So my average rate of change is $8 per year. Those are the units. I had dollars and I divide it by the years, and that's all it is. That is my average rate of change, and this is a rate. Now, if I want to find my average value, the average value is a little bit different concept. If you look at this blue shading here, uh, what happens is that if I can find the area of that blue shading, to find the average value, what you're actually doing is that, for instance, if I invested all through these time periods, continuously if you could possibly if I kept on investing the same amount continuously through all these different time periods what would happen at the end of this is that I would say oh what is my average investment that I made over this course of time and that would be your average value now this would be an infinite number of points if I'm doing it continuously and I can't add up an infinite number of points and divide by an infinite number of times. So what we do instead is we take the we take all the blue values and what we're going to do is we're going to squash them down. And so if I put up a line right here and I put up a line right here and think of this as some movable blob that I have. What I want to do is take a horizontal line and squash all of this blue area under that horizontal line. I don't know where it would be exactly here, but what happens is that if I draw this straight horizontal line, what I'm assuming now is that this area here could go in to fill in all of these other little pieces here. This one too could fill in these other ones. I don't know if I did that exactly right, but that's the idea. This deals with the mean value theorem. Now, we're squashing all this blue area into this space under this green line. Well, where this green line is, is what we would call our average value. That's our average value. This distance here is B minus A. And then this area here is also the integral. So when we put all this together, I'm not going to get into this too much. But this line here where we squash all this area into would give me my average value. And so that value is the area. And then divided by, since it's a rectangle, I'm going to divide by this length. 
and that area is found by the integral whatever my function is there it is okay that's how you find the average value so it's taking all of these values once again continuously I can't add them all up and do that so we get a different value which is kind of the mean value of all of these ups and downs and so that's our average value of the function okay so those are the two formulas we look at now how do we use each one of these concepts in calculus well the average rate of change we said the slope of the secant line this could be t this could be x depends upon how you're looking at it and then here's the average value function that we have from a to b of f of x dx and then divided by b minus a so let's start with uh, position functions and like I said at the beginning you have to go go apply these things to uh, functions where they give you rates and you find the average rate of change and things like that so this one it says it gives me a position function x of t equals 10 minus t squared I made it put a simple one and then find the average velocity over the interval from 0 to 4 well, since I have a position function, average velocity is a rate of change of the position function. And it does say average there as well. So I'm going to find the slope of the secant line. Here's 4 here. And that goes to that point there. So I'm going to find the slope of that secant line right there. Now, to do this, these are both x values. So this point here would have an x value of 0. You have to find that y value well that y value is going to be 10 and then this one here I have an x value of 4 you're going to have to find that y value well if I put in 16 there I'm going to get negative 6 so simply to find the slope all I do is the change in y over the change in x so this would be negative 16 over 4 is equal to negative 4 now notice that these are units per seconds possibly what I did was I divided and maybe you can even let's put on meters let's say these are meters these are seconds so in the end this is meters per second well I wanted average velocity yeah this is a velocity representation the units will tell you what what's going on position function divided by time meters per second so I have negative four meters per second now going over to here what if in, in so once again this is given the velocity function finding the average velocity you're going down a level I always say if we take the derivative that goes down a level that's kind of what we're doing now for this one this one's a little bit different because we're given the velocity and says find the average velocity over this interval well since I'm given that function and I want to find that average value what I do now is that I go ahead and put in 1 over b minus a I'm using this one here average value because it's finding the average velocity and I'm given the velocity function and it's going to be of my v of t dt and so let me go through this and do this and then I'll come back and talk about the units so if I go 1 over 4 minus 0 and I'm gonna go from a to b in this case is 0 to 4 negative 2t dt now what are my units through all of this remember we want average velocity so maybe I'm talking about meters and seconds again average velocity should give me meters per second well first of all if I have this velocity function that's what I put in here this might start off as meters per second dt we are multiplying by dt dt does have units so that would be like seconds so that right now in the green I got meters per second times seconds so really all I'm doing is finding total meters these are the meters that I pass through over 0 to 4 well what happens now though is that then I divide by these units here these are seconds again so it's meters divided by seconds times seconds divided by seconds overall I'm gonna end up with something that would be meters per second the units tell me a lot so if it says find the average velocity given the velocity function I have to go through this process to figure this out and if we do this this is 1 over 4 and then if I take the antiderivative of this, this would be negative t squared. And then I'm going to evaluate that from 0 to 4. So I got 1 fourth, negative 16 minus 0, which would be negative 4. 
And once again, I already did the units, so this would be meters per second. Whoa, that looks a lot like this other one. Well, if you notice, I did take the velocity function of this position function. And so if I integrate this velocity function, plug in my a's and b's, oh, that's much like this over here. And then I divide by the 4. That divided by 4 divides by the time. And so really, they are the same thing. It's just the perspective that you're looking at it from. So once again, if you're given the position function and you want to find average velocity, you're going to use the slope of the secant line, this one here. And then if I'm given the velocity function and I want to find the average velocity, I need to find the average value of the function. That's a little bit of the difference. And so that's what you got to kind of look at. Uh, quickly, if I gave you and I wanted the average acceleration and I gave you the velocity function, well, that means you'd have to use this because you're going down one level. If I wanted the average acceleration and I gave you the acceleration function, then you would use this one right here. I hope this clarifies a little bit. You have to apply it to the rates and the different things that they're working with, but those are kind of the levels that you're at. All right, once again, thanks. I hope this helps.